lot of exciting things happening at AOL. We're in three primary areas of business. We have an advertising business, we have membership business in terms of subscription, and then we have a web portfolio of about 100 properties. And that's the three areas of the business we consider a flywheel. What led us to TBM was really an effort to understand our cost at a level that we could make better business decisions. The idea was if we could drill that down into individual properties like a MapQuest or a TechCrunch or an AOL.com portal, we'd have all the data we needed to make the decisions about that business moving forward. We had initially been doing a very manual work, multiple spreadsheets, hard to maintain. And at the time, we really put a lot of focus on this. You know, tools were coming available to help accelerate rules-based models, better metric collection. The result is the timing that we wanted to be on this journey and the time that the tools and the industry kind of got to this point matched up perfectly for us. I think TBM adds value differently than these other operational tools like service management or problem management systems. We actually treat this independent, and so it has data that flows into our TBM model, and then we have data that flows out of that TBM model. And rather than having that one tool do all things, which I think has been an approach in some cases, we've really focused on that model being the model and the guts of the model and that source of information. When we first started this model, we started very simply, dividing our total cost by our number of servers. We worked with that methodology internally for a little while, really got comfortable with it, and then worked with a friendly organization within AOL and worked with them to share the information and receive their feedback so that we could update our model to make it more granular as well as more efficient. Our first meeting was actually with the CFO. The idea being if we were gonna transform the business, we needed to make sure we had the financial buy-in at the highest levels of this company. And so we probably did five or six iterative meetings to improve the model uh, directly with her. Once we had her endorsement, actually winning over the rest of the corporate executive team was fairly easy because she led in saying, these guys have really got a great idea and this implementation is gonna change things for us. So not only did we get the approval, but we also took forward a really large initiative, which was to transform our data center strategy. If we're gonna move to public cloud, what happens to our captive infrastructure and how does that play in our portfolio? But convincing the company that we needed to walk away from a facility we built and have been running for 18 years with 100% uptime is a pretty tall order and a radical idea. But at the end of the day, all of 2014, we spent moving 26,000 production assets out of those facilities and then selling that asset as a cash input to the company. In a real world example, it has lowered our uh, carbon footprint by 35%. We continue to make improvements in 2015 down another 7% this year from the momentum that we had from that initiative. I think our data center strategy is a great example of where TBM came full circle for us. When we look at TBM, we want to have our captive data center cost as well as our public cloud consumption all in one place so that we're comparing apples to apples, that we can do what if scenarios and look at models to say if we transform this business or this infrastructure supporting this business, what is the ultimate outcome of that? So we're able to take our public cloud provider data and actually map it to our business units. So map it to our actual products. This allows us visibility into what each individual product is utilizing on the public cloud. One example that had a real material impact was what we found in storage. We had a property that was using a homegrown object store uh, built inside the company to store multi-petabytes of data. And when we put it through the model, we realized we could probably do this more effectively using third-party services in a public cloud. We've now completely transformed that data and moved that service over to a public cloud, and we've saved $350,000 a month on our storage cost for just that one property. We were able to identify one of our particular business units that was utilizing 75% of our load balancers. By working with the team, we were able to identify methods for them to modify their software to do some of these same load balancing tasks instead of utilizing the expensive hardware. The easy answer for scalability problems is to throw more hardware at it, but it leads to technical debt that you have to pay down the road. If we establish a unit performance metric for each of the services we provide, then we can hold the development team to a threshold of quality and agility that will ultimately build better products and services for the company. The next step on our TBM journey is actually the implementation of a budgeting and forecasting tool because our process previously has been very cumbersome. It's been multiple Excel files being exchanged via email. We lose track of changes across multiple files. So we're hoping that this tool will actually gain us more efficiency and reliability in our data. I think CIOs that don't have a focus on cost will be surprised when other people make the decision around cost for them. What we've done at the company is moved from IT transparency, which is where we began, to IT value. And I feel like that's the initiative that TBM has helped us enable.